JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week March the 29th until April the 2nd. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, this week appears to be a relatively light one. We don't have any central bank decisions on the agenda, while the most important uh, data releases uh, may be Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for March and the US employment report for the same month. We also have an OPEC uh, meeting, but we don't expect any action. We believe that the cartel and its allies will uh, roll over uh, their current supply curbs into May. Uh, so let's take things from the beginning. Today there are no major economic releases or indicators on the agenda. Tomorrow during the Asian morning, Japan's employment data for February are coming out. The unemployment rate is forecast to have ticked up to 3% from 2.9%, while the jobs to applications ratio is expected to have held steady at 1.1%. Uh, at 1.1. Retail sales for February are also due to be released and expectations are for the year-over-year -year rate to have fallen further into the negative territory. Specifically, it is forecast to have fallen to minus 2.8% uh, from minus 2.4%. During the European session, Germany's preliminary inflation data for March are coming out. Both the CPI and the HICP rates are forecast to have increased to 1.7% year-over-year and 2% year over year from 1.3 and 1.6% uh, respectively. This is likely to raise speculation that Eurozone's uh, headline inflation due out on Wednesday may also accelerate. Now on Wednesday, Asian time, Japan's preliminary industrial production for February is forecast to have fallen 1.2% month over month, a faster pace of uh, decline than January's 1% um, minus 1% uh, month over month. The official, uh, the, official, uh, the official Chinese PMIs for March are, are also coming out, but no forecast is currently available. The Chinese PMIs have been trending uh, lower recently, and another decline in March may highlight that the world's second largest economy is not recovering at the desired pace, something that could hurt the currencies of the nations that have closed trade ties with China, the likes of Australia and New Zealand. In the early EU session, the final UK GDP for the fourth quarter is coming out and expectations are for the final print to confirm its preliminary estimate of 1% uh, quarter over quarter. Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for March are, are also due to be released. The headline CPI rate is expected to have risen to 1.3% year over year from 0.9%, while no forecast is available for the core rate. However, the HICP excluding energy and food rate is anticipated to have stayed unchanged at 1.2% year over year. At its latest meeting, the ECB decided to accelerate its uh, pandemic emergency purchase program in order to stop an unwarranted uh, rise in bond yields. Under normal circumstances, rising inflation may have lessened uh, the likelihood for, uh, uh, for, for more easing by this bank. However, with underlying, with underlying inflation staying subdued and most officials around the globe suggesting that any spike in headline inflation in the months to come is likely to prove to be temporary, we see the case for the ECB to keep the door for more action wide open. Therefore, we don't expect the euro to gain much on a potential jump in headline inflation. On the contrary, due to the fresh lockdowns in Eurozone and the slow vaccination process in the bloc, we may see it extending its uh, recent slide. Later in the day, the USA NDP employment report for March is coming out, as well as Canada's monthly GDP uh, for January. The ADP report is forecast to show that the private sector has gained 525,000 jobs, much more than February's 117,000. 
This is likely to raise speculation that Friday's NFPs may beat their own forecast of 182,000. Canada's GDP is expected to have accelerated to 0.5% month over month from 0.1%. On Thursday, Japan's Tankan survey for uh, the first quarter is uh, coming out. The large manufacturer's index is expected to have declined to minus uh, 15 from minus 10, while there are the large non-manufacturer's index is anticipated to have held steady at minus 5. Australia's trade balance and retail sales for February are also due to be released. Retail sales are forecast to have slid 1.1% month over month after rising 0.5%, while the nation's trade surplus is expected to have slightly declined. Later in the day, we have the final manufacturing, uh, the, the final market manufacturing PMIs uh, for March from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, which are expected to confirm their preliminary prints, as well as the US's ISM manufacturing PMI for the month, which is anticipated to increase uh, to 61.3 from 60.8, underscoring the fast recovery in the world's uh, largest economy. With regards to the energy market, we have a meeting between OPEC and uh, major non-OPEC uh, members known as the OPEC Plus Group, where they will decide on output production. Growing concerns uh, about uh, global demand uh, due to a resurgence of COVID infections has been weighing on oil prices recently, and thus we see the case for OPEC and its allies to, to roll over their current supply curbs into May. This and the potential improvement in um, in market sentiment in the foreseeable future may bring an end to the corrective uh, phase in oil prices. Finally, on Friday, finally Friday is uh, Good Friday in most nations under our, red, uh, under our radar and thus their respective markets will stay closed. The only markets that will stay open are the Japanese and Chinese ones. That said, although US markets will stay closed, we do get the US employment report for March. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have slowed to 182,000 from 379,000 in February. However, bearing in mind that the ADP is expected to reveal that the private sector has gained 525,000 jobs, we see the risks surrounding the NFPs as tilted to the upside. No forecast is available for the unemployment rate, while average hourly earnings are expected to have inched up 0.2% month over month, the same pace as in February. This is likely to drive the year-over-year -year rate down to 4.5% from 5.3%. And this report is likely to confirm that the U.S. economy is recovering from the damages of the pandemic at a fast pace, but the question is whether this will revive fears of high inflation or not. If not, equities and other risk-linked assets are likely to gain, while safe havens like the yen are likely to come under selling interest. On the other hand, fresh inflation, fresh inflation fears uh, may result in the opposite market reaction. As for our view, though, we believe that the first case may be true, as the Fed has clearly said that any, that any spike in inflation in the months to come is likely to prove to be temporary, and that inflation will meet their goal in the years after 2023. Remember that at the press conference following the latest FOMC gathering, Fed Chair Powell noted that it is too early to start discussing tapering QE, while the updated dot plot pointed to no rate hikes even in 2023. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and uh, listening. I hope you have a great, uh, great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next uh, Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.